Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 43, and today we're talking about the Keyboard tab. Now, it looks kind of simplistic, and it kind of is, but there are a few things that we do need to talk about. So as always, let's go over here to a new preset, and I like to select Analog because it's my favorite, and drag this down just a little bit here. So on the very far left side here, we have Pitch Bend. Now we have up and down. So this corresponds to this pitch bend wheel down here. How far semitone wise is this going to bend? So a note here. That's gonna be bending at a total of two semitones up and a total of two semitones down. We can increase this all the way to 36 if we want something really crazy like that, but let's just check out an octave here. So 12 semitones up, let's press a note here. And that's basically an octave going up. And we can do the same thing going downwards as well. We can double click these to go back to default. And now the interesting spot here. So we have this release button right here. So let's go to our envelopes here and let's give a healthy release amount right over here and go back to our keyboard tab. So what this does, or how I'm going to demonstrate this, I'm going to have this knob all the way to the top and let's press a note and let's see what happens when I release the wheel. So you did hear a pitch bend once I release this pitch bend here. So basically, in a nutshell, what's happening is the release phase of a note, will this, this knob here take effect or not? If we turn this off here and we do the same thing, we can move it all day, but if this is disabled, the release phase will not change the note or the pitch bend. So pretty simplistic there. Now, moving on from there, let's double click to our release back to normal. And we have this play settings here. So we have glide time. We're going to get to hold in just a second. So we have the glide time, right? So the kind of gliding between notes, right? And the more you increase this knob, the more time it's going to take for those notes to slide into each other. Now we have always. So always, if I hit a note down here, I let go and I play another note, it's gonna glide. If we take this off, it's only going to glide in legato mode. So if we don't do legato, do the same thing we just did, press a note here, we'll let go, play a new note, it's not gonna glide, only in legato. So that's the difference of those modes there. Now we have hold. Now this one is really cool because this is kind of useful when we're doing stuff with arpeggio. So let's turn the sequencer on. Let's go over to arpeggiator. And if we hold down a note, right, maybe like a chord, slow that way down. We kind of have to hold this note the whole time. But if we select hold, the synth will hold that note for us. Press it once and I don't have to play with the synth at all. We can do other things while this is going. We can even change chords in the middle of that. And disable hold if you want that to stop. But yeah, that's the kind of concept behind that. So you can play some type of arpeggio or whatever you want to play. And then you can use another synth or use something else in conjunction with that to kind of have a lot of things going at different times. And then whenever you want to change it, you just hit the note one more time or the chord one more time and it will change to that. So pretty cool. So yeah, I thought we mentioned that as well. So moving on over here, we have these voice settings. So let's go back to a new preset, to our synth, back to our analog, turn this down just a little bit and get some nice cutoff going here. So we have this. Now with these voice settings, a lot of this also has to do with our polyphony down here because we should talk about this here. So let's change our polyphony to, let's say three and also take a look over here. So we're gonna have a low note, a higher one, Actually, this might be easier with a sine wave. So let's play a note. We have one little fundamental down over here on the right. Play our second note. Do we see it there? Play our third note. Great. And now a next note. So right there, we can see that this last one here was cut off, and that's because this is polyphony three, and it is removing that note to play the new note that we just played. Now, some interesting things here. In the manual, it says the reassign. So this one right over here. When new notes are played, Pigments reassigns voices to them dynamically as needed. And on rotate over here, the one that we just saw, when new notes are played, pigments rotates through voices, stealing notes in order of the last recently played first. And also to mention here is let's increase our release over here. Let's put this back to a saw wave. Now, when we hover our mouse over this rotate here, it says key press triggers a new note. So let's change our polyphony to like 24 or something like that. And we'll notice the more we're hitting the note, the more it's going to be triggering new voices. 
And this waveform here looks really, really strange. Now, if we go back to reassign, it's going to keep it at that saw wave. Back to rotate. It will do that. So very interesting. So let's go back to a new preset and let's talk about these graphs over here. So this is basically a usable user graph that you can move, you can bend these lines, you can't move these uh, these nodes left or right only up and down, so keep that in mind there. Now we have velocity, we have aftertouch, and we have keyboard. So basically these are modulation sources if we want to use them as such. So we have velocity, which is going to be the velocity over here. We have aftertouch, which is right over here. We have keyboard, which is going to be this one over here. and while we're over here as well, this mod wheel is going to be for this guy over here. So before we move into this, we should talk about this mod wheel real quick. So let's put our mod wheel on our cutoff filter over here. Let's drag it like this. It's kind of standard stuff right here. And if we play a note and increase this mod wheel, that mod wheel is going to control that modulation right there on your keyboard. Now it's kind of useless on a sine wave. So let's go to a saw wave and see that in action. And you can always map this to multiple things as you put that on your resonance as well. So it can control the cutoff and the resonance at the same time. So very interesting there. So let's take these modulations off by double clicking them and removing that. So now we have this, this kind of graph here. So I will show you first with this keyboard because I think it's the most easy to see. So with this keyboard, when we hit different notes, we can see this little ball here moving back and forth. Now, wherever that ball is placed is going to be corresponding to the note that we play. So what's really kind of cool here, so let's go to, let's open up this filter here, right? So we kind of hear what's going on. We have the saw wave here. So what we can do is go into our effects tab to really demonstrate this. And let's remove this delay. Let's actually just move this reverb over here. And then what we can do is we can grab this keyboard. So this modulation here and drag it to the reverb and put this all the way to the top. So we can dra drag and drop little notes here like this to the left. So we have something kind of like this going. Let's put another node over here and one maybe down like that. And basically what we can do is we can say, okay, we can have our keyboard have no reverb, but as soon as we hit one certain spot, then it's gonna have reverb, right? So if we did something like this, that's where it's going to trigger the reverb, right? And once we hit that note here, it's crossed this threshold here, and this has told this dry wet to open. So any note above that is going to be 100% wet on the reverb. So that's a drastic example. I'd probably never really make a patch like that per se, but it's a good way to kind of visualize what's going on here. And we can always uh, right click to remove those as well. And let's remove this modulation as well again. Now, the same thing applies for aftertouch when you have a keyboard and you kind of press it into it and you can use that modulation on whatever you want to do. So you can maybe have the more you press on the aftertouch, maybe ha have to open up more reverb or more distortion or whatever it is you really want to do. And then we also have velocity, which is kind of the same concept as once we move these notes, if you play them softer, play them harder, this little ball here is going to correspond. So a softer note is going to be somewhere down here and a really hard note is going to be up here. So what you can do with that is you can almost map this velocity to like the filter cutoff, for example. So the harder you play the notes, the more the filters open, the softer you play them, the filter doesn't really open that much. So that's kind of how you'd want to modulate these things down over here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This pretty much covers the keyboard tab. Before, if you had Pigments 3.5, you would have some of that master tune stuff over here, but that has been moved to the settings tab over here. Let's kind of move our synth over here. Now we can see this master tune at 440, and we have micro tuning. We can turn this on and then change different uh, micro tunings there if you'd like to do that. So right now, like I said, 440, some people do 432 or something crazy like that, and you can do that if you would like to. So yeah, that pretty much covers the keyboard tab. Hopefully that uh, kind of clears some, some, some stuff up there. And thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video.